How is everyone doing out there on today? I'd like to welcome you to Easy Living on today with Pastor Mike and say thank you for tuning in to on today. Today is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to thank you and welcome you to America's most exciting church, which is known as Cathedral of Faith, to where this is a great church if anyone wants to be a member of it. It's a great church to be a part of because I love this church. Um, we have relevant preaching here at this church. We have a dynamic uh, praise team here at this church. We have uh, wonderful couples here at this church. This is just as a church where it's real people, it's real ministry, and it's real change that, it, that happens here at this church. Um, to where our my administrative assistant, Christopher Martin, um, is my pastor here at this church and evangelist. First Lady Felicia Martin is our First Lady here at this church to where if anyone would like to reach me, uh, my email is michaelgray430 at gmail.com and you can reach me there. And now with all that being said, uh, let us go to the word of prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another blessed day, Lord, another day that we are to be able to be into the land of the living, Lord. I just ask that you continue to touch on today, Lord, open someone's mind on today, Lord. Let them receive your word on today, Lord, and penetrate their heart, and Lord, so they can be saved and live for you in the name of Jesus. We pray and thank God. Amen. Amen. Now on today, um, passage of scripture, um, I'll be coming from the book of Ephesians, um, the sixth chapter, um, in verses 10 through 12. And the word of the Lord reads, uh, finally, my brother put be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and the golden text is found in verse 11 which says put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, if I had to get the topic for today, it would be stay strapped up, or you will be, or you will get loose. You got to stay strapped up. If you're not strapped up, you're gonna get lost. It's that simple. You got to stay strapped up. And everything we do today in today's world, uh, people may know it to where you know if anyone ever went to the movies. Um, when you go to the movies, they always have previews, you know, at the movies, whatever movie it is that you may feel you're about to go see. Um, before the, the main movie come on, it's previews. So in the, mid, the midst of seeing the previews, after the um, preview is o over, it says, what, coming soon. Then you may go to another preview, and after that, say it say coming soon to where it has a date that's expected for that movie to come out. And that's the same thing as it, as it is in today to where Jesus is coming soon. And since he's coming soon, it's time for people to get strapped up with the whole armor of God, the whole, whole armor of God on. And stop, stop being out here being loose to where you loose to where you don't have his armor on. And when you don't have his armor on, you're going to put yourself in positions that you don't want to be into where whether people believe it or not, he's coming soon. And when he comes soon, you got to be ready. It ain't no time to get ready. You're going to have to be ready already. Anticipate his expectation for, for him to come, to come back to get you. In today's world, basically, to a lot of people may think that um, uh, living this Christian life to some people, it can be one of the hardest things that you may have to do because it's a battlefield in your mind that continues to go on each and every day. To some people, it can be difficult to get yourself ready to go to church sometimes. It can be difficult some days for people to want to open their Bible and read it and study God's Word. It can be difficult to spend quality time in prayer with God daily. You know, it's, it can be difficult because difficult to be faithful with giving your full tie to your church all the time. It can be difficult to give your thoughts, your thoughts, keep your thoughts pure and keep your eyes on what is good. Yeah, living this Christian life, yeah, it's not easy. It can be difficult, yeah. So most people might wonder why it's a spiritual warfare 
we go through in our mind each and every day. It's a battlefield each and every day. That's why each and every day I get up, every day I choose time after time to believe, to trust, to preserve in the faith, well, and to obey God in his word each and every day. I have to do that because it's a daily walk with God. It's a journey each and every day that you're walking to where yesterday, whatever happened yesterday is done. with. Today is a new day. So you're going to need to keep his armor on to keep your mind right with him, to keep your, your heart right with him. You're going to need to keep your thoughts pure with him. That's why you're going to need his armor on each and every day in your life because we know the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit lusted against the flesh to where these two, they cannot, they contrary to one another. So they can't be with one another. So that's why you have to make a decision who you're going, who you're going to live for. See, see, most people, when you're making a decision, um, to have an appetite for the world or do you have an appetite for the spirit so whichever one you feed the most you gonna have to starve the other one now when you got an appetite for the world that makes you weak when it comes to the word of god because you ain't spending time with god's word so since you're not doing that he no protection are gonna be over you no no power gonna be on you because you're making a decision to allow your flesh to control everything that's going on but when you your appetite for the spirit arises, what it lets you know what, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why it's important to always get over in the spirit because over here there's power. Over here there's protection. Over here there's his presence. Over here he's, he's always with you and he ain't gonna leave you. That's why it's important to keep your mind focused on the Lord at all times and everything you're going through and he's capable of helping you with that if you just give your life to him. Yes, the first verse told us what? That finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The only way you're going to be strong in the Lord is by being over here in the spirit. You ain't going to be strong by being over in the flesh because when you're in the flesh, that spirit ain't there. You, you, can't, you can't deal with both of them. You got to follow one or the other. So when you're over here in the spirit, your mind going to stay focused on the things heavenly things, the things that the Lord wants you to be focused on, the things that's focused on kingdom money, but dealing with the flesh, you always going to fall, no matter what's going on in your life, situations may come up, and things may not turn out the way that you feel, because you're over in the flesh, and when you're in the flesh, nothing, you can't please God in your flesh. When we stand our ground, we do not have to stand against the devil himself, just against basically his wives. These wives that we go through, his wives, they basically known as these plots that he come up with, these schemes that he come up with, these tricks that the enemy come up with. That's why he's known to be crafty. He's known to be cunning, to where you gotta be able to be on, on guard for that stuff, to where we have to stand, we have to stand against Satan himself. None of us will basically survive. That's why we, we do not fight against Satan just fighting against the stand against these schemes that he tried to cover up against us with so the greek word for wiles here is basically methodia which it is from that we get out of that the word methods satan has his methods by which to injure and injure and wound us as soldiers of christ that's why the word lets us know to endure what hardness as a good soldier you gotta endure some hard. You're gonna go have to go through some battle scars when you saying that you stand and connected to the world. In today's world, a lot of people don't want to endure sound doctrine. So when you ain't enduring this, you gonna keep you gonna fall back in your flesh. And when you fall back in your flesh, you're gonna get weak. And when you get weak, you open for the enemy to do every and any any and everything that he wants to do to you to keep your mind stuck back where stuck back in the chains. Um that you once got free from the prison of the mind is what your mind going to be right back into where he wants to free you and allow you to have victory in your life. He is crafty in his wiles. In fact, he is so good and known to be crafty. Um, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3 and 11, 14, what he tells you what he appears to be an angel of light because he can change himself to disguise himself to try to get people off their kilter, to get people off their off they walk with Christ, to get people from having victory in their life because he knows praise is our weapon. He, he wants to get you to stop doing that because he once was in heaven and that's why he's so mad because he never can go back. 
he understands how powerful praise is because he used to praise God. He got tired of doing that to where that's why he knows it's so, it's, it's so powerful. Now, he want to stop those that's coming to Christ from doing that because they know they're going to limit his activity in their lives. And as long as you're in your flesh, you won't allow him 100% activity in your life. But once you get over in the spirit, he ain't going to be able to touch you. He ain't going to be able to do nothing with you. God has prepared us for even more in everything that we're going through now. We do not have to wonder what kind of attacks or tricks Satan has prepared because God has given us this the devil's playbook. And as it turns out, Satan's not, he ain't creative at all. If you really think about it, you know, we can see basically, you see his plots, his schemes, his plot, the wiles that he tries to do. These are methods that he tries to do to get you off kilter. But by, by looking how, looking at how Satan tempted Jesus, we're going to look how he tempted him in the desert. We can be certain that when Satan tempted Jesus, what well, he brought out all his big guns when he did that. So, and if, and so if we can learn from the method Satan used against Jesus, we can know that there is nothing greater. He can bring a gun such. You know why? Because the greater, the greatness comes in you. He puts that on the inside of you. When you're making a decision to walk from him, because he tells greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now in Luke, the fourth chapter, the verses 1 through 13, it continues to talk about what Satan tried to do. See here, we see that um, Satan had only three types of temptations he tried to come to Jesus with. First, he told him what Satan he wanted Jesus to turn what? The stone into bread. So when he tried to do that, that was known basically known as lust of the flesh. He's trying to get you to turn everything over there from there. But we know what God said, oh, that ain't happening. He came with the word of God when he came with that. The next one was the devil showed him, took him up to the high mountain, showed him what? All the kingdoms of the world told him, you can have all of this. And he just looked at him, are you serious? And you you don't know whose this is. This is my father's man. I ain't going to serve you to where that was dealing with the lust of the eyes. Then again, he tried to attempt, he tried to tempt Jesus to throw himself down from the pinnacle of the temple in order to easily declare himself as the Messiah and prove that God was working with him. I mean, excuse me, prove that God was working for him, which is the pride of life. So he tried to take him to the pinnacle and say, no, I'm going to flip it. You do this to show your God, your dad working for you when he knew, no, that ain't, that ain't happening. There's only one God that I'm serving, which is my God, so get thee behind me. Say, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're trying to say, it's not going to work. And your ways don't work when it comes to me. To where those were his only three temptations, Dora. And Satan has only one tactic in using these three temptations. Basically, he always, always, no matter what, he always tries to raise doubt to our minds about the word of God. Every time when he comes in that word of God, that's why he, he always raises doubt that he makes subtle changes to the word of God. He tries, you know, adds to the word of God or subtracts from the word of God. He rips verses out of context from the word of God. All the safe temptations revolve around misusing or abusing the word of God. So basically, he already showed you since he got kicked out of heaven, he don't want folks to have victory in their life because he understands how powerful it is. So he gonna do any and everything he can to get you away from this word. That is how basically, that's how he tempted Eve in Genesis 3 that it talks about. Um, from that, that's how he tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. And that's how he tries to tempt us. He tries to tempt us and say, oh yeah, you got up. Yeah, life hard for you. You know, go ahead, don't pray today. You know, since you ain't praying, don't even think about opening that Bible. Just put some over it and cover it up and go about your day on today. I'm with you. you no, know, I got you. Whatever you need, you know, I'm going to be here with you. You're going to make it through this day. He tried to do these type of things to take our mind off of this stuff. Why? Because he's known for what? Twisting. Known for twisting the word of God and raises doubt about what God has said in his word all the time that's his main thing this is why it's so vitally important to know the word of god very important to know the word of god that's why it's so important to us to be studying his word daily not weekly not making a decision you go to church sunday so you won't pick it up the next sunday that's a lot of days in there to where the enemy can mess with your ain't no can he will mess with your mind 
when he messed with your mind, now you may not even make it back next week because all week he been bouncing you around left and right. All week you been in the boxing match and you ain't even last in the first round because you ain't got nothing on the inside of you to come out your mouth to fight off you. To where for uh, the word that he to attend church where the word is faithfully taught from the pulpit and to attend Bible studies and learn a good Bible study methods. If you don't know the word of God and you don't know how to correctly handle the word of God, you will e be easily be praying for the devil. Because I guarantee you that he's a student of the word, whether you think it or not. Say he's a, he's a student of the word, not, not so he can obey it, so he can twist it. That's why it's to understand a lot of people, you know, buying soap don't make you clean. Applying it does. Reading God's word don't make you saved. Applying it to your life does to where this is something you got to read Read and apply it to your life so you can learn how to have victory a lot of people read the word But they ain't following what they say in there. It's like that's what the enemy does He's studying the word too to where when he see What you don't know he can easily twist your twist your mind and make you know oh, you went last week Well, what he was talking about wasn't really meaning for you. He wasn't really talking about you He was talking about this and that person to where you good you can stay out here doing what you want to do because ain't nothing going to take place in your life. Yeah, and if you're not proficient with the word, Satan will use his twisted version of God's word against you. That's why it's so important to continue to stay in God's word, to fast for God's word so you can get that, that hunger and thirst for God's word. That's the reason why he lets us know. And tells us when it comes to his word that what if you continue in my word, then you will be, you are my disciples. To where Jesus never, he didn't encourage his disciples to put their confidence in their past faith or past experiences. That's why he continues to say, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples. Meaning you got to keep striving, you got to keep striving for this each and every day. And from there, he lets you know uh, that what if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what it will and shall be given into you because you're making a decision to abide in his word. And from abiding his word, he lets you know that what he's a rewarder of them that would diligently seek him. By diligently seeking him, you showing him you continuing to get in his word daily and you focus on growing more in his word. From growing in his word, you something what that you hungry. So you hungering and thirsting after his word and those that hunger and thirst after his word, what shall be filled. And from there, you're going you're gonna to be by doing that, you're going to be steadfast. Then you're going to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you making a decision to show him you committed to him and you committed to his word. And by doing that, he going to give you the victory over everything you're going through. But as to see in today's world, years ago, um, um, my pastor uh, preached a, a sermon called Good, Better, Best. Never let it rest until your good become better and your better become best. In today's world, a lot of people are happy with, with going from good to better. And don't want to go from better, from better, don't want to go from, uh, from better to best. Because in order to get from better to best, you got to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, that's why I said you can go from good to better, but you can't get from better to best without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because that's the power that you need on the inside to handle whatever it is you're going through. Because in my own might, I can't fight off the devil. I can't fight off these wilds because I ain't got nothing in me. I ain't got no power to say nothing out of my mouth that's going to make him flee. That's why it's important to where the free gift that's being given you need to take advantage of it and that for with the free gift comes power that's why you know what the word lets you know since you believe if you believe that you should have this power it ain't no if ands or buts about that you gonna need the power to get you out of here it's the power that helps you live right it's the power that continues to break chains because god don't break promises he breaks chains the chain off of your mind because a lot of people are in prison in their mind and the only way you're going to get free from that is by giving your life to Jesus because he's the one that can set you free because who the son sets free is free indeed. So where he will able be able to allow you to stand to where when you able to stand now, you're going to have his protection over your life. Then you're going to have his presence in your life. Then he got the power in your life because you made a decision to stand up against the wiles of this devil instead of saying, no, I'm going to keep going back. 
I'm gonna keep falling. I'm gonna just keep quitting. And every time you quit, you continue to let the devil have reign in your life. And, and everything is going on in your life and you're never going to have victory until you get that power that you need. That's the power that he gives you with that boldness to speak to people and tell them the truth even when they're rejecting you. They may reject you that day, but the next time you come around, they may actually stop and listen because they've been going through something that don't nobody know about and they, they don't know the way out of this. So they may come to you and they're going to need some advice, but you got to have the word of God on you. You got to know the word to give someone help. To where so they can get the victory that they see and that's coming in your life. So from having that, the remedy for all the saints devices is to get daily and regularly into the word of God. It's simple, a simple cure for a complex problem. When Satan tries to attack us with the word of God, you can you just have to know the word of God to defend against the wild. So by defending that with the armor of God, now we're talking about his armor. You need to build a truth. Now I ain't talking about the belt of untruth or to be able to have truth because a half truth is still a whole lie. I'm talking about the whole truth because the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth because he is the spirit of Jesus who is the truth. See, when you get the truth on the inside of you, he gives you boldness that comes with that to speak those things, speak things that many are not going to want to stand up and speak about. And that's the boldness that's in me that compels me and always allows me to speak the truth. When I get to talking about sin, and within myself, within my flesh, I wouldn't do it. But I got God's spirit dwelling on the inside of me, which is the truth that's going to say, oh, you're going to say this because that word is in me. Because anyone ever anyone ever know what a, a Chia Pet, remember the commercial used to be a Chia Pet, which is seed. Seed comes with it. But in order for that Chia Pet to grow, what water had to be applied to it. And that's what God's word is. God's word is your water to help you grow to help you grow um, from his word. The more you read his word, he allows you to grow. So when certain situations pop up, you got this word, that you that word that's in your spirit that you can open and say out of your mouth to the enemy. When something else pop up, he gonna drop into your spirit something that you've been reading to let you know that you good. The enemy is off of you, but when you ain't got his word in you, you're not growing. So when you're not growing, you're going to degenerate. And since you're going to degenerate, you're going to quit on everything you do because you're frustrated. You don't know how you're going to get out of this because you're not strapped up. And when you ain't, since you're not strapped up, you out here loose. And since you're loose, he's, he's running rampant on your mind, making you want to commit suicide because you don't know how to get out of this. And then the time that you did hear someone bring the word to you, you felt it wasn't for you, so you never came back because it was something in that message you didn't want to hear. It's in the midst of not wanting to hear it, you said it wasn't for you, so you stayed away from it, but you got to know you can't come back because the Lord loves you. You know, he wants you to have peace in your life. He wants you to have freedom. He wants you to be free, but you got to come to him. So you can stand up against the wiles of these devils. That's why people need that truth. A lot of people don't want to speak that truth. From that, you go to the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness means being made right. In daily spiritual battle, both varieties of righteousness protect the heart. We, we need the complete righteousness of Christ, but also continuing righteousness that comes as a response to God's gift. The enemy tempts us with all kinds of sinful entanglements, but righteousness protects our hearts. God inst instructions are often viewed as killjoys and birds to some, but obedience to God is a problem for your heart from being wounded by sin. That's why it's important to keep that blessed breast pray of righteousness on. So next we go to the gospel of peace. Peace is an attribute of the Lord's very person and character. In Galatians 5 and 22, it tells you that. In Greek, peace means oneness and wholeness. The gospel, which means good news, is the for the forgiveness of sins and access to the oneness with God through faith in Christ. The oneness with the Lord produces peace. That's why it's so important to allow him to be your Lord, not just Savior. Lord means authority. Where there's authority, he's protecting you and he's giving you presence to give you peace in your life because your mind is stayed on him. Shield of faith. In a similar way, a Christian shield of faith needs to be regularly dipped in the water of God's word to be replenished and fully functional because 
faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So the only way you're going to have faith, you got to hear the word of God. You got to get to a true man of God that's, that's going to tell you how to have victory in your life. The helmet of salvation. That salvation comes to a moment when we place our trust in, in Jesus' death and resurrection as the payment for our sin. But salvation is also worked out through a lengthy process of sanctification, which means clean. Helmet of salvation rests on the work of Christ to save us, but also involves us as, as we journey with the Lord and allow him to work that salvation in every part of our thoughts. God allow him to get in this mind. The battlefield of our mind is a primary place. The spiritual battle is fought. That's why the Lord wants to fight for us and we should hold our peace. And he lets us know that. And from that, we go into the last one, which is the sword of the spirit, which is known as this word of God, which is known as this word of God. It's, a, it's known as our offensive weapon in spiritual warfare. It is known as the word of God. And it's only piece of armor. It can be both defensive and offensive because we know like i said in luke 4 verses 1 through 13 he tried what we are tempted the most uh, uh, effective weapon that god has given us to a belief as believers is the sword of the spirit which is the word of god jesus modeled this so beautifully during that tribulation there during that temptation in the wilderness when the enemy tried to come at him he completely tell him to get back you ain't got nothing over here when the devil tries to tempt you it's best to use that word of God against him. But a lot of people, when you don't got the word of God and he coming at you, your mind is so stressed out. And when people mind stressed out, what's the first thing people do when the appetite for the world is in them? When they stressed out, they become like Pop Williams from the Wayne Brothers. They feel what I need a drink to where you feel you need a drink as if that drink is going to solve everything for you to where you're not a baby. So that bottle is not going to solve your problems at all. That's why it's important to allow God to come into your life and walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh because those that are in walking in the spirit when uh, the things come upon us more than likely most times people don't know because you understand you stop for a moment whatever you're doing and make a decision to get on your knees and pray to the Lord to help me with this whatever I'm going through I need your help I can't do it on my own because the Lord is here to fight for us, so you're going to have to be strapped up. And if you ain't strapped up, you're going to lose this battle. You ain't strapped up, you're going to find yourself in a place that you don't want to be in. That's why it's important to be strapped up with the whole armor of God all the time. Each and every day you wake up because he lets us know it's saints to watch therefore. What we watching for? We watching out for when Jesus come back to get us. So when he come back to get us, we already got to be ready. We can't get ready. You already got to be ready. So therefore, when those that's dealing with the flesh, they're not ready at all. So they ain't going to hear nothing and they're going to be left behind. And if you don't want to get left behind, then you better make sure you're ready now with the, with, with the whole arm of God on you in this time and in this day that we're living in right now. And I'd like to thank you on today for tuning in on today with Easy Living with Pastor Mike. If anyone wants to join this wonderful church, the phone number is 810 955-4495. Once again, my email is michaelbray430 at gmail.com if you need to talk to me or ask me anything. And until the next time we meet again, be blessed and be safe.